The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, the one about whom the prophets wrote. He is Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. From Nazareth? said Nathanael. Can anything good come from that place? Come and see, Philip replied. And when Jesus saw Nathanael coming, he said to him, There is an Israelite who deserves the name incapable of deceit. How do you know me? said Nathanael. Before Philip came to call you, said Jesus, I saw you under the fig tree. Nathanael answered, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. And Jesus replied, You believe that just because I said I saw you under the fig tree, you will see greater things than that. And then he added, I tell you most solemnly, you will see heaven laid open, and above the Son of Man, the angels of God ascending and descending. The Gospel of the Lord. Our feast today is a great follow-on from our reading yesterday with Peter as the foundation, the rock upon which his church is built. Now, we move from the rock to the 12 cornerstones, and we celebrate the apostles, and in case you are confused, like I have been confused before, Bartholomew and Nathaniel are the same person. We, we just have different names for them in, in the beginning of John's gospel and on, but they're the same person. So we have Peter, you are rock, and on this rock I will build my church. And now we see in the book of Revelations that the city walls stood on 12 foundation stones, each one of which bore the name of one of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. So the whole city this new Jerusalem, the city of God, the, the city of incredible beauty and majesty, this, the city of the kingdom that, that we can't yet see with our eyes. Th this whole city is built upon the 12 foundation stones, and each one has the name of one of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. We also have to remember that in Matthew 19, that Jesus says to the apostles, that they will become in the kingdom of God when, when Peter asks, and, and Lord, what about us? We have left everything. Jesus says, yes, you have left everything. You will become the 12 rulers in the, new, in the new dispensation, and you will rule over the 12 tribes of Israel. Jesus intended more than just his walking on earth more than just his death or the resurrection. He intended more than his ministry. And, and this is a piece of the teaching of Jesus that, that most Christians don't grasp in our days. There was a time before when people grasped that and understood it very clearly. But, but Jesus intended from the very beginning that the 12 men that he selected will become the foundation stones of the new Jerusalem. And the new Jerusalem, the city of the living God, is that place where God dwells among people and where God and people enter into this harmonious relationship which Adam was intended to live with Eve in the beginning before the fall. Paradise, paradise. And therefore, the church plays a pivotal role, a pivotal role in salvation history. We, we can't see salvation history without seeing the church. And that's why the first, the, the, the prayer at the opening talks about the church as a sacrament of salvation for the world. The, 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 the church herself has a role in the economy of salvation, and the church herself plays this pivotal role. And this is not an invention of Paul. It is not an invention of some medieval scholars. This is Jesus' intention from the very beginning, that the church is, is at the very core and heart of his message of salvation. 
by choosing the Twelve, by constituting them the new Israel, by making them the foundation stones, and then by, by resting the whole kingdom upon these fragile men, Jesus is teaching us something. And it's something about the, the, the role of the church in the, in the passage of salvation history for human beings. And, and that is something that we celebrate again today when we celebrate this feast of St. Bartholomew. So he's talking about the come here and you will show you the bride of the lamb that has married. And, and, and the marriage of the bride and the lamb, we know that marriage took place on Holy Thursday, was consummated on Good Friday. We know that's what we celebrate every time we celebrate the Mass. And therefore, every time we celebrate the Mass, we are seeing what, what the book of Revelation is speaking about. He said, I took you up a high mountain and showed the, the new Jerusalem, the holy city coming down from God, out of heaven. And it is there, radiant glory of God, glittered in precious jewels and the beauty of it. Now let's go to the gospel reading and see again how, how we get this, this, this understanding and, and how the understanding has gone to a whole new place now. Because in the gospel reading, we, we, we meet... Nathaniel, Bartholomew. He's there minding his own business, and Philip says to him, We found the Messiah, come and see him. The man come from Nazareth. <laughs> and, and Bartholomew said, Nazareth. You, you, you have to hear the disdain in how he says Nazareth. Anything good can come from that place. And Jesus plays with him. And and to his credit, Bartholomew immediately gets it. He gets it. Jesus said, well, before Philip called you, I saw you sitting under the fig tree. In other words, I know everything about you, you know. You can't hide from me, you know. No, no, that's a, that's a, a very distressing kind of thought. Not so. I, imagine you met somebody who actually knew everything you said, you did, you thought, everywhere you went, all the thoughts you have constantly, you met somebody and that's, that's the knowledge they have, that, that's very disconcerting. And, and that's what Jesus does to, to, to Bartholomew, to, to Nathaniel. And, and, and Nathaniel, to his credit, immediately says, you must be the son of God. You are the son of God. He, he has revelation. He has eyes to see. And, and because he says this, and because he has revelation, Jesus then continues, oh, you say this because I said I see you on the, the fig tree? Well, you will see greater things than this. You will see heaven laid open. And, 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 the son, and above the Son of Man, the angels of God ascending and descending. Now, this is a direct reference to Jacob's ladder, Genesis 28. Where, where, Gen where Jacob on his journey rested in a place and, and that night the heavens opened and there was a ladder and angels were ascending and descending. The place was understood as a resting place for God. Wherever in the, in the ancient world the, the people had a, a theophany, a direct encounter with God. They knew that that was a resting place, a place where God will come to earth to rest. And, and what you do is you, you mount a monument on that place and, and you, you, you make it sacred. And that's why Jacob puts up, erects a pillar and then pours oil and makes the place sacred because this is a place where, where God communes with, with human beings. And what Jesus is saying is that he is a resting place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is a resting place. He is the place because he says, above the Son of Man, the angels of God are ascending and descending. Above the Son of Man, heaven is open. And there's a commune, a constant commune between heaven and earth above the Son of Man. So the Son of Man is a resting place on earth for God. Now, now, this is a mystical teaching that we are having here, that, that here on earth, God is present. And if Jesus is a resting place, and above the Son of Man, you have the angels of God constantly ascending and descending, then we have to understand that in the revelation of Jesus Christ, we have God himself who is setting up his church on the 12 foundation stones of the apostles with Peter as the chief apostle 
and the first of the twelve. The others will be given the power to bind and loose, but they will not be given the keys, which is only given to the overlord. Jesus is the chief cornerstone, but the apostles are the twelve stones around, are twelve stones or foundations around which this church is built. And Peter is the first of them all, but Tholomew is one of these twelve. But let's go now to what this says to us. Because if Jesus is a resting place on earth, then that altar is a resting place on earth. Because you see on this altar in a few minutes, Jesus will be coming. And the angels of God will be ascending and descending. Every time the Eucharist is celebrated, the angels of God are ascending and descending. Every time the Eucharist is celebrated, heaven and earth um, are wedded together. Every time the Eucharist is celebrated, heavens lay open. And the angels of God who, who are constantly before Jesus and on the Lamb and constantly before the one of great age in worship of, of Jesus and the one of great age, those same angels are worshiping here on this altar when we are here celebrating eucharist on earth the same eucharist is being celebrated in heaven and and the lamb who was slain is in heaven and and there's a worship around this lamb the same way when we say lamb of god and raise the the the, the sacred species here on earth the angels are ascending and descending and what is given to nathaniel is sight the sight to see the truth the truth is that god is in all things the truth is that god is is here manifesting himself in the world if we have the eyes to see the whole world is pregnant with God but with our blindness we don't see it let's pray today for sight for the sight to see the truth that God is here with us the whole world now is a resting place and the whole world and wherever there is a Christian in commune with Jesus Christ and the, and the Trinity that is the resting place of God also because he lives in us he makes his home in us and that is the truth also so today let's pray for sight that our eyes may be opened to the to see the glory of God manifest amongst us amen Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your tremendous love and we ask, O oh God, that you give us the way to see in our whole world the glory of your incredible love. In each person that we will meet today, the spark of the divine, Lord, hear us. We pray, Father, for, we pray for our Holy Father that you will give him wisdom to lead this church and courage, Lord, to do whatever you ask. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And for the bishops around the world, especially the bishops of the AEC region, we pray that you will give us courage and wisdom also to lead this region so all people may see your incredible love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all the many people who have placed their petitions in the prayer boxes and that we hold these petitions here today and ask your mercy, Lord, for each one. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We bring our prayer to the Father through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen.